Hello and welcome to another edition in the SEMA Dialogue series. I'm Pukuletu Tele. Well, SEMA has just published a report called Powering the Next Generation of Business, which advocates a new initiative called Integrated Thinking, which goes beyond integrated reporting to be a way of fundamental business practice that is much broader, interconnected and forward-looking than ever before and will help organizations to improve decision-making and facilitate their integrated reporting. On this episode, we'll be taking a look at integrated thinking. What is it and how does it move beyond the integrated reporting we've come to know so well over the last few years? Well, joining me in studio, I have Ian Jameson. He's a program lead for Corporate Reporting Dialogue from the Inter International Integrated Reporting Council. Jakob Beis, he's a corporate professional for technical accounting and reporting at ESCOM. And Larissa Clark, Director Professional pra Practice Group for Accounting at EY. Also joining us is our wonderful studio audience who will be firing questions to the panel in a moment or two. A warm welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, lady and gents. Well, uh, let's start off with uh, the issue regarding integrated thinking. And Ian, I think you may be best positioned to uh, help unpack this. What exactly is it and what does it mean in the broader landscape of things? Well, I think, you know, um, integrated thinking is, is clearly something that needs to evolve. Um, and integrated reporting, as we see it, has been an opportunity to, it's a Trojan horse for integrated thinking. Uh, a lot of organizations are still struggling with reporting, mm -hmm. but we believe that once they start doing integrated reporting, we believe the next sort of step is to get that integrated thinking to organization. Because that's when truly when you can see how things, the connectivity of all business activities to contribute to, to value creation. You mentioned that this is the Trojan horse then of integrated reporting. Maybe take us two steps well, it's back. It's, it's, it's a, it's, it, the reporting is the Trojan horse into the organization to get integrated ah. thinking into the organization. Maybe let's unpack the reporting landscape then from an integrated perspective. Uh, are we seeing the landscape changing in, from a South African perspective? Well, in South Africa, look, South Africa's definitely been recognized as a leader in integrated reporting. And uh, globally, we just uh, recently had our pilot program conference in Madrid, and South Africa was again sort of put, um, uh, recognized as one of the global leaders in reporting. And I think there's a lot of pressure on um, South African companies to demonstrate leadership in reporting. And we really think that the, the opportunity to get involved in, in developing integrated reporting further, be it through the business network, uh, is, is really something that uh, companies can can, can tackle. Mm. Larissa, maybe if we can come to you because from an EY perspective, you monitor and follow how well uh, companies are progressing with regard to the adoption of integrated reporting. Uh, your, your analysis of uh, the progress made so far. Gugu, um, I think that's an interesting question. Um, I think it's a, pro it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journey for a lot of South African companies. I think a lot of South African companies have made a serious effort. Our survey shows about 66% of the JSE listed companies have made a serious effort to embrace integrated reporting, which I think is fantastic. There's still a bit of a feel that's sort of lagging and maybe watching and, and, and looking. Mm -hmm. um, but what we've also seen is, you know, the, 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 the international framework was only published end of last year. Um, and of our, from our survey, only four of the companies have really embraced the six capitals. So I think there's still a lot that needs to happen, you know, companies will start unpacking this, seeing how this can be translated into their business, and they'll have to start thinking about things like, you know, what does intellectual capital mean for us? How do we measure it? Um, how do we grow it? Um, you know, year on year, is it is it more or less? So I think there's still a lot of work for us to be do, and I, and I think it's still a long journey. I think there's still a lot that can be done. What's holding them back? <coughs> I think... Um, it, it, it's difficult to say. I, I think it's um, there's a, there's a lot um, of sort of the old corporate reporting framework um, that people are used to, you know, of IFRS um, mm. and, 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 and that kind of stuff. So I think it is, it, it's, it's a bit of a journey. I think it's a, a real mindset change. And I think the more we are doing and the more we sort of realizing, yeah. um, you know, that integrated th um, report is, is a wonderful tool. I think people are going back and saying, but actually maybe we need to embed integrated thinking in our business and almost taking a step back and, and really looking at it and almost then the, the better your integrated um, thinking is in your business, the better your integrated report. So it almost becomes like a, mm -hmm. a, a cycle that, you know, you s the better the one becomes, it, it, it sort of just perpetuates other. So I, I think there's a lot of work still that can be done in that area. Mm -hmm. And one company that has adopted this, Jakob, uh, you representing ASCOM, a parastatal, where you've managed to adopt this kind of practice. Have there been challenges experienced in rolling this out? I think if you think about ESCOM, um, we've started to do something which we called integrated reporting about uh, in, in the year 2002. Uh, what we did is that we started to have an annual report and we had an environmental report and we consolidated the two. Um, and I think over a period, so, so when 
integrated reporting came in recently, uh, and say the last three years. The changes that we had to make weren't that big. But then what you started to do and what Clarissa said is that you need to go back and check. For example, we started to look at, <coughs> for example, we've got KPIs. Yeah. And we went back and we prepared uh, what we call procedure manuals, where you document how do you calculate them, what do you need to do to, uh, to uh, calculate the numbers. So you look at standardization. You also look at uh, uh, systems. For example, uh, we're currently looking at, uh, at SAP disclosure management. So you look at all your processes. You also look at your governance processes. For example, we created the Integrated Report Steering Committee, where you have a formal uh, governance process and, you, and, and basically what you do, you put your reporting processes, you, you, you take it through the Steering Committee. So um, w w when we talk about integrated thinking, you talk about integrated reporting, you actually need to go back to your basics and see how do you establish your basics in your business. Mm. And that will facilitate your integrated report. Mm. Uh, what we, for example, do is that we do, uh, uh, because we are a state-owned company, we do share a shareholder report on a quarterly basis. And that shareholder report forms the basis of our integrated report. So, we, so it's not a fact that we get to the end of the year and then prepare an integrated report. We, for example, now in September will do an interim report that we will publish. But uh, your information basically comes through your processes that you do on a, on, on a regular basis. It sounds like quite a, a, a lot of investment that needs to go in here. Time, resources, and Ian, maybe this is where you come in to provide companies with guidelines as to how to do this in a stress-free manner as possible. Are there particular yeah. guidelines available? I'm not sure if we could say it could be stress-free, but uh, <laughs> I think... But, uh, all that we can do is at least give some um, evidence as to where organizations are going. So we had the last three years the pilot program and Eskom was uh, a leading pilot program company that was part of uh, the IRC pilot program. And that was an opportunity where for the three years whilst the framework was being developed, because like Larissa said, it was only released in December last year. Mm. But leading up to that point, we had over 100 uh, companies and over 50 50 investing investor organizations that were involved in essentially co-creating this framework. Which was, which was really important because uh, the stakeholder engagement in developing the framework at least gets us to a point that it's a framework that leading companies get, understand, believe in, and it's something that, that, can, that can definitely adopt. Um, so I think it's, it, it, we do see it happening. I think the next, the next evolution now is about getting large-scale adoption of, of integrated reporting globally, and it's happening. It's happening, but maybe it's at happening. a rate that's a bit too slow then. Isn't that the problem, Larissa? Yeah, it takes time. Maybe Ian has better place to, <laughs> to answer that. Uh, well, uh, like she said, it's December last year the framework came out. And the, there's been f significant signals in the market. Singapore has come out uh, from the regulatory point of view that it's going to, similar to South African JSC, on a comply explained basis to have integrated reporting. The Minister of Japan has, has included integrated reporting thinking in the Abenomics framework, which is essentially around mm. the economic uh, development of Japan. Um, we've seen Brazil has got a comply explain for integrated reporting with their Bovespa, with their exchange. The, your big sort of investor, your sovereign wealth fund, the APG, these are big organizations who have significant capital in the market are all saying something that yes, the integrated reporting is something significant. The UN processes with the, the B20, which is happening in Australia, where they've be the integrated reporting and the IRC is actually referred to on the agenda at the next B20 event, which is a significant, significant step. So progress is being made, but for those who are still dragging their feet, maybe they need to understand the benefits that might be associated with this. Uh, Larissa, maybe if you can address this, the stakeholders and the kind of value that they can yeah. get from integrated reporting. I mean, from our interaction with companies, and you know, we've we've spent a lot of time with the companies that we've ranked as, as doing really well. I mean, the benefits have been so, so wide, and I think for every company it's different. Um, I think some of the benefits they've told us are, you know, breaking down the silos, having a better, clear understanding of their business model, mm. better integrated thinking, you know, really understanding and 
right now. And I think companies that have got a clear business strategy and a business model um, do better, you know, because I think if, if, if you've got a clear business strategy as a, as, as a company, um, then if HR wants to implement a new HR system, the finance guys are saying, well, we're not paying for this, you know, and I think there's, 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 there's better understanding whether this is, gonna, this is gonna make us more efficient or more profitable or we can create better value. I think those kind of benefits. So I think breaking down the silos, um, understanding the business, business model and expand your business model to, to the market better. I think mm -hmm. those kind of benefits companies are definitely seeing. Well, we should be getting excited about this because it almost seems as though it has the potential to revolutionize the way uh, companies manage and understand their business model. From Eskom's perspective, again, Jakob, <coughs> um, the, the benefits that you've reaped from this. I think Despite the fact that we think you can't keep the lights on. Yeah. Huh? The lights are on. Okay. Yeah, they are. The huh? on. <laughs> um, I, I think sometimes there are small benef benefits that, is c that you can reap big benefits in the long term. To give you an example is that when we started with uh, about three years ago, uh, when, when we had um, Paul O'Flaherty as, 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 as a finance director, Mm. For example, is that, and we started the integrated steering committee, is that firstly is that we found that by creating a steering committee with different people sitting there, for example, the person that prepares uh, the business plans is sitting there. Uh, what you find is that your information from the reporting side flows to the business planning side. So you complete the loop. Then also, for example, is that what we are starting doing is that you, you find duplication in the information in the business. And by uh, implementing systems like, for example, off SharePoint or uh, SAP DM, you, you can now basically, you can start cutting out duplication. So th there's lots of things that are starting to happen. For example, um, in our governance process, we also have an integrated report working committee that we call the workers. And for example, people will now come to you and say, can you help me that we implement uh, SharePoint, for example? And they started doing that in, in other sections in, in, in the business. So what you now do is that, for example, you have one report that is up to date. Previously, we had different reports and you now need to consolidate all the, the, the comments that you get on, on your reporting. Mm -hmm. So all over, the, uh, I, I think, you're finding that you're getting benefits in improving your processes. Um, for example, is that if you look at your auditing process or your assurance process, um, we've started, uh, I think, the last year also to put your evidence on SharePoint, for example. So there's lots of little things that is happening that is going to reap your big benefits in long term. But how difficult has it been to implement that mindset change? Because it, 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 together with integrated reporting, we're referring to integrated thinking here. And it almost seems as though there needs to be some kind of mindset shift, getting people out of the usual schedule that they're used to. Um, what we have done is that you don't go from zero to 100. What you do every quarter or every six months you look at what can you improve in your processes. And that's what you start doing is that we have found is that if you, for example, just look on the reporting side, every year we, s we look at what other, uh, the other good companies doing in terms of reporting. And then you say, I want to do one, two or three things. And then mm. you implement it. But in terms of systems, for example, is that um, if you now see what is available in terms of support from systems, it's a, a significantly better than it, it was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So you take baby steps, but these baby steps uh, is like they accumulate over time. Mm -hmm. And the same if you want to improve your report is that there are many good reports available and you look at how can I improve it? And what you also find in the business is that if you are starting to do well in your reporting, you also get your uh, uh, executive committees and your ethical co uh, and sustainability committees they are getting excited and they start reading your reports. Mm. Uh, 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 this year what we have found in, 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 in the March year end is that we had significantly more comments from the, uh, the senior uh, executives and, uh, and board members in ESCO than previously. But it's because people get excited what you write. I think also if you look at your report, your report is significantly shorter. Um, because, for example, when we went to uh, the board committees, is that they're not looking for a long report, they're looking for a short report. 
And uh, the, one of the benefits of, of integrated reporting is that the report has become shorter. It, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, they call it concise. It's also more focused. It's also you, you're looking at the material items uh, in your business. You look at what stakeholders want in your business. So uh, uh, we have seen many benefits. So no more depressing bedtime reading, in other words, <laughs> from what we can gather. But Ian, maybe if we go back to that relationship between integrated thinking and integrated reporting, some might ask which comes first. Yeah, yeah. I, I would think in an ideal setting, you would, uh, if a company has got a really sound strategy they, and, and taken it through a process that it's completely integrated in all of the issues across all the capitals, the strategy is written up in such a way that it's already considering integrated thinking. Mm. That would be a perfect case. Um, some companies are doing that. I think that I must be honest. There are some examples of companies with really solid strategies and are looking at integrated uh, aspects across their business. But then there's, there's other organizations that have become traditional and have just got these silos of excellence uh, across the business that aren't connected. And there, in those organizations, it's a retrofit situation where, like I said before, I think integrated reporting is a, the perfect Trojan horse to actually get in uh, integrated thinking into that business. Mm. It's interesting that you mentioned those silos because my first thing that comes to mind is do they need incentives then? Larissa, you may be your best position to answer this given the reports that you analyze from various companies. I, th I, th I think that's one of the challenges of integrated reporting still is, you know, w in an ideal world, what you really want is you want a front of the company strategy, how they're going to make money or how they're going to create value for the business, mm. how they're going to measure this, what are they key performance indicators if you like, or you know, how they're going to measure how well they're doing, then an evaluation of the performance and then how that translates directly to emoluments. We're not seeing anybody really pulling the thread through in that way yet. Um, and I think a lot of companies are still struggling. I mean, it is, it's really difficult to decide, this is going to be my strategy, these are my material items, these are the critical success factors and how well I've done and how what should I have done. Um, and I think there's still a lot of challenge in terms of crystallizing that out, setting proper performance measures, setting targets for yourself, and then evaluating yourself against that. So I think that is still a journey for companies. Well, is it maybe that sometimes companies lack the tenacity to be <coughs> able to be agile and adapt to change, maybe, especially in a South African environment yeah. where economically there's so many yeah. challenges being experienced. I think that's exactly right. I mean, there, there are numbers of challenges. You know, you know, you look at a brilliant integrated report and there'll be something there that sticks out and you'll know this is just, you know, the remuneration committee chairman that's not wanted this report in. So I think there's still a lot of old, <laughs> you know, old little hooks that they've still kept in their reports and that sort of break the flow. And I think it is just a bit of a journey. People just need to sort of um, go with a, let's, let's, let's try and crystallise our vision of this company as best as we can and tell the story in a concise manner. And I think... Um, it's, it's difficult because there's so many fingers in the pie, you know, to get that very clear story. And there's so many people that have to contribute. And you, it's effectively, you know, you're wanting it to be embedded at your, your integrated thing at a board level, which mm -hmm. is where it probably should sit. But you actually need every single person in the organisation to feed into that process. So a lot of fingers in this pie, I think. Uh, one of the things, just to talk to Larissa's <coughs> point, which is a great way of looking at it, is saying that integrated reporting is looking like through the door of a company strategy. Mm. and not through the weeds of data that's often with all the rep multiple reporting chains that comes up to, uh, you know, up to sort of various board or audit committees. So that, that's, that's the distinction, is that we're not trying to say that data is not important, but we're just the lens of how we're looking at the data. Yeah. And, and I think the other important aspect about that is what South African companies are still really struggling with is whether the integrated report should be written for the stakeholders um, in general, in a general sense, you know, in, in other words, looking at your employees, your um, tax authorities, your labour, everybody, um, your, your, your sh shareholders, or just the shareholders. And I think it's really important that you almost decide that up front because if you're trying to be everything to everyone, mm. it does take away a lot of the focus. Um, and, and, and I think that sometimes clutters. And I think a lot of companies are still very nervous of not complying with... Um, regulation, um, the Companies Act, all those kind of things. So all those kind of little hooks still make their, their way, back, way back into the integrated report. Um, whereas I think the integrated report is trying to be something um, a little bit different. It's trying to just be a, a very concise document that tells your story in, a, in as, as short and concise manner as possible. Again, um, I'll use the words the perfect bedtime story because it does seem as though that's the message that's coming across here. But Ian, when you take a look at the overall global environment, where, how does SA fare uh, if, if there are rankings in, in particular? <laughs> sure. Okay, I am sitting in South Africa. So, um, <laughs> look, I think, like I said, South Africa has definitely been held in high regard as a leader in the in this space, and I think we are very much still a leader. Um, but what I can say is that the rest of the world is, is catching up at, at a, a rapid rate. Um, so, I, and in, in terms of, we've got uh, quantity in terms of number of integrated reports, probably, 
but uh, an area that is, is gaining a lot of traction is the quality of the integrated reports. And I think that's something that you know we need to recognize that although we're doing well globally and we've got good reporters, we need to start looking at the detail of the content in the context now of, of the framework that was uh, recently released mm. and start looking more around the quality of what it really what it is really saying. Um, and that's just in the company side that we're referring. And I think what's quite an interesting dynamic in other parts of the world, companies aren't driving integrated reporting. In other parts of the world, uh, investors are driving integrated reporting. So like in Australia, the superannuation funds, are the, they are actually requesting of the companies that they're investing in, they're getting them to do integrated reports because they want to make sure that ha how they're allocating capital is in a way that makes sense. Mm. So it's quite interesting, different markets are how they're approaching integrated reporting. So that's an area in South Africa with an investor space that I, d I believe that we need to be sharper. Um, and our, our remit is that if an integrated report is not going to be used by an investor, we failed. Mm. Jakob, maybe that brings us to you because you've got one of the biggest shareholders here. You've got so many stakeholders to respond to, being the general public as well of South Africa. Has that also been a, a mindset change, not only internally within the organization, but with regard to your stakeholders and investors that you've had to change? Um, maybe just to give a comment, you talked about the lights. In 2008, mm -hmm. in, in our annual report at that stage, I think we, we, uh, it was still called the annual report, if the people said to us, um, why didn't you warn us that we can have load shedding? Mm. So I think if, so if you talk about uh, uh, stakeholders, what we do is that we get feedback as part of our business operations. We get feedback from stakeholders. So uh, when we report in, in the integrated report, you will look at your material items, but it, to a big extent, it's actually influenced by what your stakeholders are looking for. So. If you now look at the report, you will find there are comments that there is a risk of, of this or that. Uh, so I think there's a lot more transparency. Um, and of course, it makes business sense to look at what are your stakeholders telling you. For example, they will tell you the prices are too high. Mm. They will talk to you about maintenance. They will talk to you about um, what we call integrated demand management. For, um, how do you manage your demand? So uh, definitely we look at what other stakeholders say, uh, but what we do in the end is that, uh, what we did in the, in the March report is that when we address things that, 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 that what, the, uh, what the stakeholders need, we will do it in terms of our strategic objectives. Um, because we just have too many. We, I think we have about 45 items that we say the stakeholders are, uh, have certain needs. And your stakeholder, of course, may be the shareholder, it may be your investors, it may be your big customers, it may be the man in the street. Mm. But um, So I think the challenge that you have is that uh, how do you determine materiality? That is not so simple. Because something that may be important to the company may not necessarily be important to the st stakeholder mm. or vice versa. And isn't that maybe where the change needs to come, Larissa, where it has to be kind of a two-way street, where you not only inform the organization to start thinking in an integrated thinking and integrated manner, reporting manner, but for the stakeholders as well. Mm. Well, and, and I think that comes down to the page. And I, I think if you're a state-owned company, um, probably a wider stakeholder audience. Um, but I think, you know, for most companies trying to focus on their shareholders, perhaps, um, I think a lot of them are still trying to be everything to everyone. And, and I think that sometimes loses a bit of the clarity in, in your report. So shouldn't uh, we be creating this kind of awareness? And if so, who does that responsibility lie with? Yourself, Ian, <laughs> or me being the journalist out there who's Shows transmitted like the this, information? Yes. <laughs> um, look, I think yeah, there's definitely various organizations, uh, be it through SEMA and, and, and likes of organizations, are advancing uh, their communication and starting to ramp it up. You know, the big four that are involved and lots of training and conferences that are happening. So that, that awareness is happening. Um, it is getting, it's just gonna, it's gonna take time, I think. So uh, it's just a case of making sure that there's consistent messaging. That's what needs to happen. Consistent messaging. Reminds me of a word that says, biki biki mark mir, huh? <laughs> Slowly but surely <laughs> we will get there. Yes. So we've established the landscape for the moment, but after the break, I actually want us to take a look at listed companies from a JSC perspective in South Africa and how they're faring. If you can give us a little teaser before we uh, go to an ad break, uh, uh, Larissa, are we faring well from a JSC company listed perspective? 
I think it's fair to say that most companies are making a serious effort, or what, you know, two thirds of the of the of the field of the of the bigger listed companies are making a serious effort at, at preparing a good integrated report. And I think we've seen them progressing over the years, and, and I think there's some different progress, but I think there's still a lot more to be done. Still a lot more work to do, and maybe we'll double check that commercial viability versus the stakeholder relations. But do stay with us, because after the break, we will be back with an insert from the winners of the EY Annual Report Awards, Royal Bafugeng Platinum, which was recognized for their 2013 annual report. We'll see you right after this. Good to have you back with us here. But before we carry on our discussion in studio on integrated thinking, let's take a look at this insert where we spoke to Lindy Mochiahai, Investor Relations Manager for Royal Buffalo Gang Platinum, and found out how much integrated thinking within their operations contributes to producing an award-winning annual report. Let's take a look. Royal Buff King Platinum is a black-owned and controlled mid-tier platinum group metals producer listed on the JSC, which operates the Buffer King Rasimone Platinum Mine and is constructing the Style Drift I project, both of which are located in the northwest province of South Africa. We caught up with Royal Buff King Platinum's Lindiwe Monsiwa Chai to find out how much integrated thinking impacts their organizational decision making. For Royal Buff King Platinum, integrated reporting is not just a product producing the integrated report. It's a way of thinking, that's how we approach our business, having an integrated view on the business. But maybe if I can just take you back in terms of where we started with the whole integrated thinking and integrated reporting. Um, 2010, we produced our first integrated report when we took over management of the business from Anglo-American Platinum and we listed the company on the JSE. It was an interesting journey, um, quite challenging, not easy, especially accessing the operational data that will enable us to integrate our thinking and our reporting. But we soon realized that as a company, for us to be able to achieve our goals, um, we needed to look at the whole business holistically, and that means we don't operate in silos, and we look at the whole thing in an integrated manner. So we've had to optimize our systems at the operations in order to make sure that they all talk to each other and they enable management to make informed business decisions. Um, but that will impact on our business model, our strategy, our material issues, the various capitals, our inputs, activities on the, for the business model and the outputs and obviously the outcomes. And also just understanding what our stakeholders are looking for, how we impact on them and how they impact on us as a business. So we had to make sure that as an entity we understand how everything is interlinked and enable us to then be able to have a complete picture that's sort of like integrated and doesn't work in different silos. Lindiwe talked us through the unique aspects of their business model and how they integrate this into their operations and decision making. Possibly the most unique aspect of our business model is the aspiration of achieving more than mining, which really is at the center of what we do um, as Royal Buffalo and Platinum. Our business model is designed around the six capitals um, and obviously the inputs that goes into the business, um, the activities, um, the outputs and the outcomes. But I guess around all that is what are we doing to enhance um, the stock of each capital. And I guess we've seen it work. Um, I mean, we, we, we produce concentrate uh, that we sell to Anglo-American Platinum. But for us, we don't just see the final product and, 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 the, and just the profits. But it's all about how does the business model impact on society? How does it impact on all the stakeholders? Um, obviously, the key being the providers of capital. But as you know, every stakeholder, be your employees, um, the labor unions, um, the communities, government um, and all sorts of other stakeholders, they all have to be taken care of and we make sure that in our business model that's what we try and achieve. You know in the beginning it was a bit challenging because even um, the people at the operations, you know, they were sort of like operating in silos and we had to bring everyone on board to say everyone needs to know how their part of the business impacts on the greater business. And we've had to make sure that we enhance our operational systems um, to make sure that the data that we get, you know, um, firstly there's integrity of the, of the data, but also that it speaks to every part of the business. But the other thing that we've tried to do is to 
encourage the whole thing of accountability, that as an individual, every employee that works on the system, you need to be accountable and take ownership of your reporting to make sure that the data that you produce at the end of the day has got integrity, it's accurate, and it meets the, um, the requirements of the business. And not forgetting the whole thing of everything still needs to be integrated so that we can achieve our goal at the end of the day as a business. We're certainly finding out how our JC listed companies are incorporating integrated reporting and integrated thinking. But time now to get some questions from the floor. We do have a couple of questions in the pipeline. Uh, maybe to the gentleman in the back, you had your hand up first. If you could please stand up, introduce yourself, sir, fire your question, and then we'll take another one from the floor before coming uh, to our panelists to get a response. My name is John Roberts. Um, I'm battling to distinguish between um, integrated thinking and good old-fashioned strategic thinking. Can you help me? John, thank you so much for your question. Maybe if we could take another question from the lady who's just in front of you. Hi, I'm Vivian Erasmus. Do you find that many companies still struggle with having that mentality of only giving enough information that they need to give and not really integrate, integrated thinking and integrated reporting and explaining exactly what's about their business? Very much the same mentality we received when BEE was first introduced. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naveem. And John there. Maybe let's uh, pick up on John's first question. How do you separate between integrated thinking and good old-fashioned strategic thinking? Ian? No, um, great question. Um, and, and this is a question that has definitely been asked before. Unfortunately, there are various answers to it. Um, but uh, I think our view is that it's something that is, there's an association with strategic thinking is that it's very sort of high level. And that's looking at the essentially the thinking that would go into looking at, at a strategy. Integrated thinking is much more de in-depth in terms of its connectivity across the business. So I would say one of the, the distinctions would might be is, is the level of, of depthness that's applied with the thinking within the organisation. Hold on, tell us about this depth. Because if I'm at Royal Buffalo Gang Platinum, are you saying that as the miner myself, I'd understand the necessary integrated reporting? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it'd go down to that level, but at okay. least a couple of clicks down in management where you know, traditionally the, the strategy was done by a strate strategy department or business planning department and that the strategic thinking associated with that was done by those people there. Whereas the integrated thinking, you're saying it's actually, it's a, it's a different, it's a complete fundamental mind shift of how business managers need to operate within their business. Mm. So they need to understand that if I'm an HR manager, I need to understand what is my churn rate and the, the impact of, of people leaving the organization and what that does to the the uh, the revenues and I think SAP did a great example where they've they've actually been able to quantify what the impact one percent up or down is about 62 billion uh, 62 million euros of, of loss or increase in revenue so the HR manager has an association of understanding on the connected to the revenue mm. and that's integrated thinking yeah. we'll come back to that and maybe find out who's best positioned to implement this kind of integrated thinking because it does seem as though it's a multi-level uh, understanding as you make mention of. Yeah. Moving on to Navem's uh, question where she uh, asked uh, the, the companies and their positioning, whether they publish just enough information versus what's necessary, uh, quite necessary versus integrated reporting, similar to the reference she made when BE standards came out before. I, th I think it's difficult to generalize. I think some companies really see this as a, a fantastic tool to explain their value proposition. And I think a lot of companies have gone, made a lot of effort to try and explain their business model. There are definitely a few companies, um, if you look at our survey, that are really trying to do the minimum. Um, that's probably a third of, of, of the companies that we've looked at are really trying to, you know, have made no real effort um, and, 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 and maybe not really trying to, 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 to give more than what is required. But I think a lot of companies are seeing the value of giving a balanced report, of giving equal to the positives and the negatives. Um, there's a big, big risk that it can just become a marketing spin. Um, and I think that's a big danger. And some of the companies have done really well, you know, so sometimes they, you know, it, 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 it is very good marketing um, for the company. I think a lot of boards are seeing the benefits of being transparent, you know, explaining if things have gone badly in our organization, explaining why they've gone badly, what has been done. And, and I think that immediately raises their credibility. So I think there are a lot of good reasons to actually provide that balanced reporting and not just pay lip service or just do some greenwashing. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, we'll take two more questions from the floor. We did see hands up a moment ago to the lady with, there we go. There's our first question. Please stand up and introduce Hi, yourself. Hi, Sandra Gouveia from EY. So my first uh, point is that we talk a lot about a perfect bedtime story, but I think um, 
we need to caution around that. Is that really what we're looking for, a perfect bedtime story? Does that mean the, 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 the organization with the perfect story is actually the organization with the perfect value creation story? Or um, are they the, the companies doing the best if they are reporting in the best way? Thank you so much for your question there and comments, Sandra. Uh, one more question from another lady from the floor. Please stand up, ma'am. Um, yes, good afternoon. Um, my question is, what are the biggest challenges and that, and that a uh, you know, company would actually you know, face when you know, they are trying to do this integ integrated reporting? Thanks. Let's pick up with Sandra's question before we get to Hadika's question. Uh, the perfect bedtime story. Is the perfect story always the company that's creating the best value? Maybe a little bit more analysis needs to be drawn on that. And maybe, Jakob, to get your perspective. I'm not sure that you have a perfect story. If you look at the Eskom story, there's lots of challenges and there's lots of opportunities. Uh, I think it's more a story on what is happening in your business. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do to uh, correct certain things? But I don't think it's a perfect story. Um, value creation, I, I, I think, is the aim where, where you work towards. It's not a fact that you have arrived. And uh, maybe if you make money, you make lots of money, it's about a perfect story. I think it's a, it, it is, firstly, in terms of your strategies, where do you want to go? Uh, how's your progress in getting there? How did you do this year? Mm. What do you want to do in the short term? What do you want to do in the, uh, in the long term? And I think what Ian has also said, the connectivity between the different things. If you, if you look, for example, at Eskom, you find there's lots of trade-offs between the capitals. Um, and I think what Larissa also said is that this is a, a path that you can do. <coughs> you can improve an, in, in, an integrated reporting. If you look at the, uh, the objectives of a capital, um, what, are you e what is increasing, what is decreasing, how can you use the capitals better? That, that is not a thing that we can learn one day. If we look at the environmental uh, uh, issues that we have, uh, to address it and, and to make better use of resources, uh, uh, that is going to take many years. If you look at e externalities, we don't really give much information about externalities. So, um, perfect story, maybe in 100 years, <laughs> but not now. I just want to follow up on that point, because does it mean that a company that has this wonderful story to tell where everything is going right, shouldn't we be reading that with some caution? Because every company has challenges that it yeah, faces. It, you're right, Google. I think it should raise some eyebrows, because to, to talk to Jakob's point, and the concept of a story assumes that it's finished. Mm. And you know we sort of believe that with integrated reporting, and Larissa said it's well, it's a journey. So it's essentially it's a never-ending book. As long as the organisation's in operation, every year they developing what is the new sort of chapter of this of the story that they're on. How has things changed? What what influences have, uh, have had on their strategy? You know, th it's, it's 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 something that and that is a different way of thinking once again. Whereas the traditional reporting was looking at hindsight. This is what happened, and it's finite, and we can cut it off there. Whereas with integrated reporting and integrated thinking, it's saying it's a lot less of what's happened. It's more about what we would like to happen. Exactly. Maybe coming back to another comment that was shared by uh, Nova Merzola Sandra is, uh, does more information necessarily equal better information? Mm -hmm. And I think that was to Ian's point earlier, you know, I, I, I think that the aim of Integrated Report is really to look at the company through the, through the lens of its strategy, not through the weeds of data. And it's really to try and clarify that um, and, and try and tell a story that's succinct, not trying to be everything to everyone and, and really trying to get to the essence of, 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 of your value proposition. Mm -hmm. Hadika had a very valid point uh, asking about the biggest challenges that are experienced by companies when they try to deploy uh, integrated reporting. I'm sure you would understand yeah. a lot of their concerns. Yeah. I think I, I don't think there's any one challenge. I think every company, depending on their situation and depending on where they are, um, have got different challenges. I mean, one a great challenge for a lot of companies is where to get the information from. I think um, a lot of companies' is, um, information is, is very um, biased towards capturing invoices, sales, you know, those kind of things. But the non-financial data, your intangibles, your intellectual value, um, you know, 
it's difficult to mine platinum. You know, how mm. do you quantify that? Um, it's it's difficult to write as, as a, a platform for you to sell your insurance products um, and having a distribution network. How do you quantify that? I think those kind of things are, are very difficult. So I think those kind of challenges for companies. I think some companies really struggle to get buy-in from their leadership into this whole process. Yeah. Um, and, and, and and in my view, if if your if your board is not bought into the integrated reporting and the process, it's an uphill battle. Those companies really struggle to put a coherent report out. In my in my view. Um, so the, the, the number of challenges, getting the information um, and just putting your story, you know, and, and the whole lot of fingers into a pie, you know, it's, it's difficult to actually have one clear vision. So I think the, the numbers, depending on your company and your business. I think to just talk to one of the challenges that um, definitely have noticed is that there's an accountability aspect often in an organisation and that oh, there's this new thing called integrated reporting, whose baby is this? Mm. And it's, it's and to Larissa's point on who needs to buy in to take ownership of it. I mean, different organizations, I know in Eskom it's very much driven within the finance department. Other organizations, it's driven within the sustainability department. Others, investor relations or treasury. It, it, it's, it's very different. So I think one of the, the challenges is often saying, well, who's going to take this on and drive it? That, that probably the first point, and then a lot of things can flow from that. Just very quickly, is there anyone best positioned to take this on? Well, if I may, Jakob, and uh, because I know Jakob very well, but I think, and I, he won't say it because he's, he's such a polite man, but um, <laughs> you know, I think one of the things is where it has worked really well in finance and in Eskom's case is that what sustainability non-financial people do really well is they think about what the, the material really critical non-financial issues are. But they're not necessarily good at being able to uh, measure, monitor, m get reliable information in that space. Whereas within the, the accounting and the finance uh, profession, they're a lot better in providing systems to support the, some of the non-financial information to make it more relevant and reliable that it can actually then be integrated into the reporting system. Mm -hmm. And Eskom is a good example of, of Jakob was very much part of driving that. So I think that's, I believe, one of the good sort of uh, where companies have done really well is where it has been driven through the through the accounting and finance part of the business. I'm trying to go to chartered management accountants being able to run with this maybe. <laughs> As well. They might be a better so. place. But I do understand that we have one more question to take from the floor. If you could please introduce yourself, ma'am. Yes, I'm Lorraine from Skolkvac. Um, my question relates to just exactly this discussion. And so it, it's really what is the role of the management accountant in terms of gathering the data, analyzing the data, giving the forward-looking view, um, and then in the continuous process review uh, uh, program, what is the role of the management accounting and how will that all contribute to developing integrated thinking? Mm -hmm. Ian, maybe you're best positioned to uh, answer sure. that. Thanks, no, no. Lorraine. Excellent question. Thanks, Lorraine. Um, no, look, I think you know, clearly you've almost in part half answered the, uh, the question. Um, the area around sort of managing of information you know, and the, the annotations and various non-financial um, but uh, needs requiring uh, accounting. So the, the example that I gave about SAP uh, where they actually have to uh, manage the churn rate of employees, you know, there's an associated value with that and they have to account for that. Yeah. Who manages that? And the, uh, definitely within management accounting profession there's definitely that opportunity to fill that space because there is a need to make sure that information is, is tracked, monitored, measured and reported appropriately. So absolutely. Jacob, maybe you can add to this too because it almost seems as though you've had to play the role of uh, influencing and educating the HR manager and somebody else in investor relations uh, to, to understand this uh, integrated reporting landscape. M maybe to say uh, what we do in ESCOM is that we have monthly reporting. And the monthly reporting is prepared by the management accounting section. Um, what we do is that uh, when we take the information or that information that is prepared by the management accounting people flows into our process on a quarterly basis. Now, strictly speaking, uh, the integrated reporting uh, and the shareholder reporting, uh, the thinking was that it should be done by the management accounting people. Mm. Uh, but in ESCOM, for example, we work very closely together. Um, I've been involved with annual reporting and integrated reporting for many years. But uh, working together with uh, the management accounting people, we sit next to each other. We uh, develop systems together. And for example, is that what we're starting to do is that uh, certain information we put in on our side and it flows to their side and vice versa. 
So that uh, we what we try to do nowadays, and it didn't happen two years ago, is that we're trying to cut out duplication of information. Mm. Um, so when, when uh, at this stage, uh, on the management accounting and ESCOM at, at the head office, is that they will focus on the financial, but they also have non-financial information. Um, for example, we're standardizing the templates that we're using, the style that we're using. We're looking at language, because when you write the integrated report, your style is a little bit different. But uh, every day, we're working closely. Why would that matter, though? The style of the difference between the integrated report and the annual report? Uh, the management accounting people, they will write it at this stage, they will write it for internal uh, consumption. In ESCOM, we have spent lots of time and money in terms of getting accurate information. Uh, I have good KPIs on the table. Uh, but in the end, what you want to do is to analyze things, and that is where a management accounting person comes in. Uh, where I said I won't necessarily go and analyze things, but uh, if, if, if you can improve your processes, then your management accounting people will have more time to analyze things mm. and to advise management uh, maybe in what direction they should go. Mm -hmm. So, but it, it, it takes time to get there. Biki Biki? Yeah, Biki Biki. <laughs> Mark Mier, yeah, no doubt. It does seem as our audience is on a roll today. We've got another question from the floor at the back there. If you could please rise, sir. Hi, my name is Grant. I have a question. This integrated reporting and integrated thinking, is it not an extension of the traditional chairman's report? And it's merely a duplication of effort here. Thank you so much for your question, Grant. Ian? Um, I would say no, um, in the sense that, you know, because, you know, you could, you, you could maybe argue that so the chairman would be the one giving the high level summary of, of the organization um, and would therefore be the best placed person to talk to the strategy of the organization. So I guess there's some merit in your, in your question that it could be, if you like, the, the first sort of port of call into an integrated report. But um, I wouldn't say that it is, is an extension because the, the makeup on, of the integrated report around the framework, the content elements, that is are specific elements around the capitals which you wouldn't necessarily find in the chairman's report. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you often find your, your chairman's report being an intro introduction into your integrated report mm -hmm. and a lot of companies are struggling as to where to put it, you know, the old fashioned, and, and a lot of companies mm -hmm. are using that as an introduction to your integrated report. Mm -hmm. So we've mentioned something so poignant here because we've spoken about parastatals, we've spoken about JSC listed companies, but what about the small guy on the street, the small to medium enterprises who have all this other red tape to go around, but uh, when it comes to integrated reporting and even integrated thinking, is that even a concept that they've been introduced to yet? I, ha I haven't uh, seen much evidence of that. Well, it's, I haven't what I can it. say, and it's not necessarily much the small medium listed companies on the JSC, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. NGOs has you know, been very uh, interesting. And Kotlin's is one that just springs to mind mm -hmm. that is, sees the, in providing uh, the, the organization in the form of an integrated report, it provides an opportunity to, to talk to potential funders, mm -hmm. which is, again, it's that tacit recognition that this is an opportunity to use this report to engage with investors. And it has b been quite successful. And I think Kotlin's is an example that's probably done quite well. Again, the rate of adoption there is slightly slower there. Do we need more encouragement maybe? Uh, well, I, I think it is happening. Again, we're talking less than a year. It, it, it's going to be happening. I, I think it's just a case of, um, you know, within the small and medium listed companies, um, I know that the JSC is definitely, and the, the Integrated Reporting Committee of South Africa is looking at how to engage with the smaller and medium companies um, and to learn from their, their bigger, big brother counterparts on the listed, on the, on, you know, that are also listed. And would they potentially be pairing where a big brother like ESCOM would advise a smaller company, Jacob, would you be open to that as to how to go about it and the little intricacies to take into account? Uh, to give you an example, for example, um, we had sessions with, with not, not necessarily with smaller companies, but with s other SOCs. Uh, we had a session with the um, Road Accident Fund, for example, how do we do things. Uh, we can have a session with Transnet in terms of our processes, not necessarily what they want to put in. Uh, we'd also had sessions with, I think, uh, another SOC recently. So, um, we don't mind talking to other people and, and what we have learned and what works for us because th it's, uh, uh, for us it's nice to see other people doing well. Mm. If you water it down for, for the layman who might be watching this, uh, this afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, integrated reporting, why does it matter to them? 
Well, to the small company, why it would matter to them for me is it gives them that opportunity to tell their, their story or the intended story in terms of how they create value in the short, medium, and the long term. And through that process, they get a better understanding of their business model such that they can actually access capital. And I think you know that's the benefit at the end of the day. A lot of these small companies are struggling, they're, they're folding, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult economic time. Mm -hmm. But if you're able to position yourself in such a way to demonstrate how you can create value, you just make yourself more attractive to, to potential investors. Coming back to this uh, storybook that we were referring to at the top of the show, we just in the beginning phase, phases, as you mentioned, in the infancy stage, when you look at the future of integrated reporting in South Africa, what does the landscape uh, look like in your dreams yeah. with the bedtime story? Oh gosh, in my dreams, the bedtime story. <laughs> Um, well, I think the next sort of uh, areas of that I believe there's opportunity and development in the South African landscape is uh, particularly around the public sector and public sector reporting. You know, I think there's the, the private sector and the companies are doing well. And uh, as Larissa said, it's two thirds of the listed companies and it's, it's happening. The next area of opportunities around public sector reporting. And uh, we've had some really good conversations with the, with the South African government around it would be amazing to be able to tell the South African government's story. You know, if you think we've got the National Development Plan, and how is that story being communicated? Hmm. That is essentially government strategy, the 2030 National Development Plan. And so there's an opportunity to look at how integrated reporting and integrated thinking can actually support public sector reporting. And um, we are, uh, the IRC is actually launching in Washington DC in November, the, the International Public Sector Pioneer Network. The South African government um, has definitely expressed an interest. There's no formal commitment yet, but I think uh, there's an opportunity that we can definitely leverage South Africa again from the public sector reporting space. Uh, other areas of opportunity in South Africa is around the investor dialogue. And I think there's definitely that, and that is uh, happening, but we can definitely uh, pick up traction in, in making sure that there's that dialogue between investors and companies. And uh, the institutional investors, particularly asset owners, pension funds, uh, that's, we've got a pension fund network which has really been born out of Australia and that's going to become a global network to get those pension funds together and saying like, you know, to, to collaborate, to share information so they can start sort of working together globally and I think there's definitely an opportunity for local South African pension funds. The, the GPF has again sort of been, been involved in this process but I think it's, that's areas where I believe there's, there's big opportunity here. Significant growth in public sector, investor dialogue, as well as uh, asset owners. Larissa, your views on uh, how we can navigate this uh, new path that we've uh, highlighted for ourselves with regard to integrated reporting in South Africa? Um, I think there are a number of things that, that still need to happen and companies can still focus on. Um, I, th I think greater awareness of your, of your capitals and what they are and quantifying those and trying to define them and trying to explain the trade-offs between them. You know, when you're deciding to, to invest in one project over another one, you know, it might be a mining project, a deep deep level mining versus a sort of more open cost mining, you know, what are the trade-offs? I'm surely not only thinking about the financial capital or the financial aspect of it, I must be thinking about the social, the environmental, um, the labor, all those kind of things. So I think explaining those trade-offs but better. Um, I think more balanced reporting, I think that's that's another thing, the trend that I would be looking for um, in the future mm -hmm. is companies more being transparent about, about their issues and, and what they're doing to address these. Um, and then just more focused, um, you know, more crisper and sort of distilling their story really looking at the company through the lens, not trying mm -hmm. to be everything to everyone, and trying to really crisply tell your story. Mm. Michael, before we go, your closing comments as to the lessons maybe that you've learned as being part of the instrumental figures who've helped in integrate or uh, instill integrated reporting at ESCOM. I think what uh, Rita said is to make it more concise. Um, that I think is a challenge. For example, when we did our uh, 2014 report, we said, look, there are certain issue, issues in ESCOM that we want to communicate. But I think if you look worldwide, the people are making it shorter. It will become better. Uh, but I think it's, uh, 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 it's something that you only learn by experience. Mm. Uh, you're not going to write a good report in the first year in terms of the integrated reporting uh, uh, framework. It, 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 it takes experience. 
Exactly. Well, slowly but surely, we will get there. Thank you so much to my studio guests for uh, joining us in this discussion. Well, that's all we have time for with this edition of SEMA Dialogue Series. Thank you so much to my guests, Ian Jameson from the International Integrated Reporting Council, Jakob Bass from ESCOM, and Larissa Clark from OEY. And of course, uh, thank you very much. A big thank you to our studio audience for participating and uh, asking, asking their questions. But until next time, from myself, Kukule Tukele, it's goodbye. <laughs>